Hello everyone and welcome to the first of my Smash Wrestling updates. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the shows that we've got coming up. First of all, I want to talk to you about the Northern Tournament. Uh, the Northern Tournament is a, a big tournament that happens. Uh, it used to be annually with Smash Wrestling. The pandemic kind of changed a little bit. But it's back and it's going to be in London for the first time this Saturday. So first of all, let's start with talking about Kevin Bennett versus Mike Rollins. Uh, this is a rematch from a little bit earlier in the year. Mike Rollins, it looked like really had Kevin Bennett's number, and uh, it was really outside interference was the only thing that kind of saved Kevin Bennett and his championship here. This is important to keep in mind because in a Smash Wrestling Championship match, Kevin Bennett has the uh, he has like the champion's advantage, right? Like if he's disqualified, if he's countered out, anything like that, he does not win the match, but he does retain the championship. He cannot lose a championship with one of those uh, stipulations. However, this is a first round singles competition. If somebody interferes on behalf of Kevin Bennett, he will lose the match and he will be out of the tournament. I personally think Psycho Mike probably has this match. Uh, Kevin Bennett has kind of relied on the outside interference a little bit too much in, in, in recent months. Uh, I think since coming back from the pandemic, Kevin Bennett has had a, a, an attitude, a cockiness, an arrogance. And, and whilst he would argue that he's backed that up, I don't think that it's been clean victories. Uh, and as a result, I think that when the, the rules are enforced and the rules are in place and there's no championship advantage, I see Mike Rollins taking this one personally. The next match that we have is going to be uh, an interesting contest. Talking about Kevin Bennett using outside interference, he took on the first ever Smash Wrestling Champion, Matt Cross, uh, in April in London. And Matt Cross lost because of outside interference caused by Charles Crowley. Charles Crowley is back in Canada. He's going to be taking on Matt Cross for the first round competition in the Northern. And I think it's interesting. We're going to see uh, uh, basically... The Canadian Goldberg was the, the, sh the kind of shorthand, uh, the nickname that Matt Cross had, undefeated in Canada for the longest time and with that championship belt. Charles Crowley has only ever lost once. That was a rematch to Psycho Mike. And uh, he's kind of riding a, a wave of momentum. He's going to be taking on Matt Cross in round one. Uh, another match, another round one match that kind of came about as a result of last uh, the, the last show at the London Music Hall in April is uh, it's Carter Mason taking on Brent Banks. And Carter Mason lost his match against Puma King, and the stipulations of that match was that he would have to apologize to the Smash Wrestling fans for uh, months now of either taking time off, uh, not taking his competition seriously, uh, demanding uh, apologies from Smash Wrestling management, uh, kind of having this sort of conspiracy uh, against Smash Wrestling management. And... Brent Banks, uh, he came out at the end of the match. Conor Mason had lost, refused to apologize. Brent put him into a submission, and the only way that he was willing to let that go was with Mason giving an apology to the Smash Wrestling fans. Mason was furious about it, demanded an opportunity to fight Brent Banks, and as they're both in the Northern Tournament, a round one match just makes the most sense. So these guys are going to face off against each other. We've been seeing this rivalry building. It's going to be interesting to see who of these two is able to make it through to the fifth round, sorry, the, the five-man match, the, the final round of the Northern Tournament later that night. Our final two contests then are a little bit more of a wild card. We have Vaughn Vertigo. Vaughn has been uh, looking very impressive since we came back from the pandemic. He did lose his match against Kevin Bennett, but that is the first match that he had back after having major surgery, a hernia surgery as well. It's just something that, uh, you know, some might say that maybe he wasn't ready for, maybe he wasn't kind of uh, expecting to kind of take the fight. At the end of the day, however, he did make the decision that he wanted to have the competition. He wanted to fight. He could have taken an easy way out and he could have asked for a doctor's uh, exemption from that match. He didn't. He took the fight to Kevin Bennett. It was competitive. Bennett did win the match. But like we talked about earlier, he has not been wrestling straight singles matches. He's been using the championship advantage to his favor. Worked out in the same place then. He is going to be taking on... Uh, Artemis Spencer. Artemis Spencer is uh, one of the top wrestlers over on the West Coast uh, from the British Columbia area. He's been wrestling a lot in companies uh, such as uh, ECCW, Defy Wrestling, who we'll uh, be talking about a little bit later this week. And 
Artemis Spencer is a, a dangerous, dangerous competitor for anyone that's uh, in any kind of shape or condition. This is a man who his last contest was against Nick Gage. This is a man who uh, is a technical wrestler, but at the same time is a very, very hard hitting person. Uh, I think that Vaughn Vertigo, if he's going to win this match, he's going to have to use his, his speed, his flight advantage, yeah, the ability to kind of like catch people unaware from, from odd angles. Uh, that Vaughn bomb, that sort of a maneuver, that's the type of offense that Vaughn is going to need if he's going to make it into the final match. And the final contest that we have in that first round is uh, two individuals from BC, both looking to make a, a big, big name for themselves. Uh, both of these guys have fought each other before. And they're no strangers to each other. They're no strangers to the competition that each other brings. And I think that this is going to be one of those uh, kind of potential sleeper matches of not just the, the tournament, potentially the entire weekend. Travis Williams, uh, Judas Icarus, hard-hitting fast moving, striking competitors. And, and I think that both of these guys are gonna be putting a lot of work into to kind of make a, a big, big splash, a big debut splash. Whoever kind of uh, goes forward from this match, I personally think is probably going to be my pick to win the whole series. Uh, I can see either of these guys not just winning the Northern Tournament, but coming back in uh, August to take on the champion, uh, Kevin Bennett. I believe is probably going to be the champion. So at that point, I, I don't see him uh, losing that with anything kind of coming up, in all honesty. Uh, I think that if Kevin Bennett finds himself across the ring from either Judas Icarus or Travis Williams, I, I think that... I think we have a new uh, Smash Wrestling champion. I think I can see that kind of coming. The final thing that I wanted to talk about really quickly, if you are subscribed to the newsletter, Smash Wrestling newsletter, uh, they send out a, a quick email uh, on the weekend, kind of give you a runs up. Here's some of the shows that are coming up. Here's how you get all of your tickets. There are links in the description down below, obviously, if you want to grab tickets for any of these upcoming shows. But interestingly, with regards to the uh, Super Showdown show itself, um, they had a little teaser image in there, and it does reveal that the show will be taking place at the London Music Hall. It'll be on uh, August the 20th, and the uh, the event will feature the debut of the uh, uh, now based in the US but Australian female wrestling superstar Shazza McKenzie. So excited to see this! Shazza has been uh, someone that I've seen uh, wrestling as far back as Shimmer. Um, it's excellent every single time she ever had like an excursion in the United States. To see her in a Smash Wrestling ring is going to be awesome, a bit of a dream come true, and it's going to be interesting to see who her opponent is going to be. Uh, I wonder if Nikita is able to hold on to her championship through uh, this coming Sunday. If we're going to see her take on Chaz McKenzie, lots of amazing women coming into Smash Wrestling over the summer. We have obviously the Canusa Classic coming up with some debuts, some great returns like Rosemary, and obviously the the debut, the starlet of uh, you know this is uh, Maki Ito's uh, debut in Smash Wrestling. That's going to be incredible. So links in the comments if you want to get tickets to any of our upcoming shows. Uh, let me know if you have any predictions, who you think is going to win the Northern Tournament, and I'll talk to you again very soon.